Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the first official episode of The Zoo with me, UTC, and my buddy, Tag. In this episode, we create an enclosure for the stunning, fully mutated tapaharas that we bred last time around. Their colors are insane, so they need an insane enclosure. It is unlike anything you have ever seen before. A glass half sphere, a dome created using structures plus eco trees to decorate the inside, and it is one of the cooler things I have ever built. I hope you were excited for this. If you are, go ahead and click the like button. Join us for this build and click the link in the description to check out Tag. Let's do this thing. <laughs> uh, you, look, you, uh, you look good. This is going to be fun. Oh, I am the most majestic creature in Ark right now. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I think this is this is going to be a good uh, good penalty for the for the loser. Yeah, um, this is uh, this is my punishment, ladies and gentlemen, for losing a mutation. Like for somebody who, you know, has been mutating creatures for two years. Yeah, this is I'm my lost. basically my first first attempt. We we uh, got together and, and bred tapaharas, and um, um, yeah, they are beautiful. So, yep. uh, Color Bomb, which I submitted for my one, actually died to a magnificent phantom carno or a Carnotaurus. Yeah. Oh, really? Similar colors, though, right? The the difference was the body was not in cyan. Um, I think you had blue yeah. on the body, right? Yeah, but otherwise, the colors were close. Um, but uh, these went head to head. I don't know exactly what your split of the vote was. My people voted about three to two for my guy it was about 60 40 was this yeah so it, was, it was about the same and i don't blame him because i even said that i would vote for yours if I, <laughs> if I had a vote so but yeah so uh we've decided that the winner gets to decide the punishment um or what, or what we're wearing or paint each other basically something's gonna happen to the loser and this is my punishment i yeah. look magnificent though and i'm not gonna hate it and i will point <laughs> out that it's not that much of a punishment because i've chosen to dress myself in insane colors too it seemed only right if we're going to create <laughs> dinosaurs that look like this that we're not too bland that we look like a, a color bomb so to speak. <laughs> that is very true but today we've got something extremely exciting mm -hmm. we're, i think we're going to build something that has never really been built in arc before I looked on YouTube, I Googled it, and nothing came up that looked looked like what we have in mind. Exactly. So we're going to, I want, well, what we're going to do is we're going to actually build a half dome into this wall here. And we've kind of decided that all of our flap flaps here should be kind of basically built into cliff sides. Like a, a glass aviary almost, sphere-like. Yeah. Sphere it's going to be pretty cool. And we can. the nice thing is we can actually basically put trees and stuff into the rock face here for like little perches. Oh, and stuff. yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I have uh, I did a video recently on my channel where I created a, a really big, large round platform. And I did it mm. based on a pixel circle, which is a technique I learned as a Minecrafter back in the day. You would look at how things are pixelated and be able to recreate them in the world. So we're going to kind of look at what a pixelated version of a sphere would be and use that geometry to build it into this cliff face. Exactly. Now, that being said, we will be using uh, like a no foundation support for Structures Plus, but if you recreated this on the ground, it would work with vanilla structures. But uh, yeah, we'll be using uh, mods when it comes to decor, but when it comes to actually building, I think it'll be Structures Plus with foundation support off will be the kind well, of You know what concept. I completely forgot? These guys can attach to walls too, so oh, this really dang. fits. I yeah, it does. We forgot about that. Yeah, it's an under. We yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, so this is gonna be perfect. So I guess. Yeah, man. Do we want to just kind of experiment, see how this is gonna work, and then bring them back once we figure out the whole process for this? I think so. Rather than tutorial style, it'll be closer to like a let's build where we'll go get some progress done, come back and show you what we've done, explain any key concepts, and then we'll do a little bit more off camera because it will be a bit of a. It'll be a bit of a challenge and a little <laughs> bit tedious, be. too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Yeah, man. Let's find a home for these beauties. So welcome back, guys. We've been doing a little bit of work, and we mentioned we would do some off-camera, and we've run into two issues. One that is common always in ARC, which is snap points. So there's a couple of things that can go wrong when you're building like this uh, that you can get your snap points off 
uh, in terms of depth and in terms of height. We've done a decent job combating that. Um, and then the other issue that really stands out that I did not consider compared to doing this in Minecraft is walls are not square. Um, you, you can look at these, man. They are wider than they are tall. So by following the, the design of a perfect sphere, we have ended up with something that's a little bit squat. Yeah, it's a little bit flatter. It's like uh, we threw a ball at a wall and it did not turn back into a ball. And it squ <laughs> squished. And what we're, kind of, what we're envisioning for the final process, guys, is uh, using the, the, what's available with S Plus is tint all of this and uh, remove all of the metal bits so that what we have looks like a crystal perfect crystal sphere so the kind of I, ha I have a theory of how we could fix this and I laid out a version of it over here where instead of designing something that's a perfect sphere we would use an ellipse and we could I think if we redo it we can redo it in a way where this would work perfectly in vanilla because our current version we went with so that we have one tile in the center um, our thing is 17 by 17 which means technically you would need one wall in the center. So we've got a half wall here that allows us to build up because in a sphere, this wall would be centered like that. So I think we can base this instead of on a sphere off an ellipse where we're still 17 by 17, but now our height is 22, which would be a nice even number. And it would mean we could start building right with uh, ceilings or with walls off a ceiling. And um, the one thing that you kind of pointed out is that we're already running into the extended bit of cliff above us, and if yeah, if we, we go gotta... if we go taller, a lot more of our sphere gets disappeared inside the the rock rock face. So, so long story short, we have to blow this up and redo it. <laughs> right, which I don't mind doing because I think now that we've done it, we've got a pretty good feel for how to do it. Um, I can be yes. looking at the sphere, slapping stuff together, and it, I can go left, you can go right, and we can kind of just mimic each other. Um, but I think overall we want to lower this down as well. So the final version yes. would be about, what would that be, about five walls taller. And hopefully that would balance out the, the, the fact that arc walls aren't square. So if we go down, uh, why, don't, why don't I build off our current version? Um, to go to to go down. Your body is like stretching across the world for some reason. Yeah, yours was for me as well. So if we go down to here and have, uh, whoops, have this be our new height, then yeah, the think... top of our circle will come in just below. It should come in just below the this, um, this extension of the cliff face. So yeah. I think the plan is take down what we've got now. Uh, rebuild and rebuild with a slightly different uh, template to build off of, and you can see tag obliterating everything. I'm far enough away; I don't, I don't hear the horrible <laughs> noises your viewers are hearing. Um, but yeah, we'll, we're gonna we're gonna take it back, build the same 17 by 17 pixel circle base, and then we're gonna build up instead of a height to, of 17 or whatever it is. Uh, I guess we're technically eight and a half. Um, we're gonna build up to a height of 11. Um, so we'll be basing it off a 22 high ellipse. Is that a decent I'm enough explanation? Way to fix this. Yeah, I think that was good. Okay. I'm just figuring out a good way to blow all this stuff up so, <laughs> so we can. <laughs> all right. So we have completely destroyed everything and we've come mm -hmm. back and we have a significantly more spherical sphere, which is what we wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so while we punched it into this little uh, sphere maker as an ellipse, um, we're yep. actually creating a sphere in the game, which we should probably put a link in the description for everybody um, with a link so yeah. they can recreate it themselves or know what tool we're using to actually be able to do this. And the reason I was so into redoing it is that when we did the width, it makes total sense to do it in an odd number, but it doesn't really make sense to have the height in an odd number, which means... You know, you're not going to get a perfect sphere in that sense, right? But, um, but because of the way, uh, because of the fact that we decided to redo things in this sense, we are able to, you know, choose the height and we chose an even number, which means no half walls are needed. Nothing, nothing funky on that front is needed. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to yeah, fix. It's... Here's one, of, here's one of the snap point issues, guys, is you can have your walls snap there or, or here. Uh, and so I've, I've been doing it this way. And trying to 
trying to keep them in line. And then the other one that will cause issues is um, building off a ceiling raises your snap point ever so slightly. So we end up with uh, potentially snap points off vertically and and horizontally. So just be consistent, whatever you do. We could do it the way you were doing it at first tag. We could do it the way I was doing it at first. Uh, as long as we do the same thing over and over, it's going to come together. But yeah, by by using not a sphere as our base, we're kind of making up for the fact that the walls are shorter than they are wide, and we're ending up with something close to a sphere. So I think at this point, man, we finish our work, um, we cut away, and then we do all the, the stuff of removing the metal bits and tinting the glass, oh, God, and we yeah. bring people back <laughs> and, and show them the fantastic thing. The one thing I will say, guys, this technique gets easier. We moved so much faster on the oh, redo of this, <laughs> vastly. Like, yeah. we just, we went... We, we got we got to a point in three minutes that took us 25 minutes the time before. So if you're doing something like this, practice makes perfect. And we're going to keep practicing until we have something perfect. And then maybe we'll bring you guys back and show you how it's looking. All right, guys. So that is how it looks from a distance. I wanted to show you the approach to it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we'll do a little wander around. There are some things in Tag Zoo worth checking out. It's been a while since we did our first time together. And I missed our last chance uh, to record together. So I will uh, show you a little little something that we've got here. While I was away, Tag went ahead and worked on some breeding of the gators, the uh, these fantastic capros. He built a cool little gator pen, kind of a very swampy feel to it, and he has some very cool colored gators, cyans and pinks and reds, purples and blues. I think it all worked out pretty well. And uh, I think one of his patrons actually added a gift shop to the place as well. So we'll wander by that, and then we're actually gonna get up. You might be wondering, how do you get up to check out this exhibit if you were a visitor to the zoo? And Ooh, there you go. There's Tag and I think one of the patrons and there's your little, uh, not a gift shop, a pub. But uh, let's work our way up to the dome. It's fantastic. And we've done it with zip lines. So I went and colored myself my pants the right color, even using a zip line motor. And if we jump up, boom. Okay. Ready? And we head on up. And I think we're going to implement this somewhere, somewhere throughout the zoo. Uh, quite a few places throughout the zoo we're going to have zip lines. But um, that's the bottom of it. We added a little half wall of uh, wood at the bottom. And uh, I did upside down ceilings on the bottom. And that adds visually a ton of, it makes it look supported, which is fantastic. And then Tag added some dynamic pillars on an angle, some uh, railings underneath as well. And then get up here. Don't jump. Just uh, press E and boom. Okay. And here's how it looks as you approach it. Come on in. Tapahara pin. How good is this, right? So there's Scott Ryder who won three to two on the voting. And in our next episode of this, we'll be breeding again. You guys will have a chance to vote on the best one of these again. And I think Skittles was his second one. Uh, this is not the one in the voting. But, uh, but yeah, fantastic. Is that tag right there? There it is. Showing the place off. Um, and so we're pretty happy with it. What I'm going to do now is go uh, go up in the air and show you this thing from above and get some maybe some cinematic shots of this. Um, but that is how it looks. An experiment in dome building and sphere building. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. Tag did all the interior stuff while I derped around on the outside. And um, we added in a few little bits of detail. We added in metal. Uh, you can kind of choose which bits of metal show on the S plus glass and you can change the tint. We've got a little under 50 percent tint and we chose to uh, uh, close up some of the seams where there was an obvious gap in the S plus glass with uh, the metal uh, siding bits and I did that all throughout this is the side I did our sides are not that is one part where we lost our symmetry is uh, is how Tag and I did the uh, metal details on the seams. Uh, we're not entire, entirely even across the board, but this is how we're looking. And the Tapaharas look right at home in there, right? And if you back up from a distance, the whole thing looks supported. It catches your eye enough without being completely eye grabbing so you can approach this zoo and you go up and you go Ooh, I wonder what's up there but it's not the only thing that's in your vision you're going to be attracted by the capros by the rexes and then you're going to want to know what's up there and as he and I continue to build we will add some more domes because there are many many flyers that we may end up breeding over the course of the series but this this is the one I know the it looks like fog is about to set in so we might get rained on but this is how we're looking 
Those are our two guys perfectly at home in there, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. So I hope you guys enjoyed. There will be a link for the uh, sphere generator that we used. And uh, basically what we did was 17 by 17 for our base. Basically, if you look up pixel, UTC pixel circle, you'll see my tutorial on how I did that for a 49 diameter one. But we have a 17 di diameter one. And for height, we actually figured out that the perfect height to create a sphere was... <laughs> got to be careful with these zip lines, I tell you, was around 22. And that allowed us to use no half walls, so you could create this exact shape. Just punch in 17, 17, and 22 into that pixel circle generator, and you will end up with exactly what we've got here. Pretty cool. Uh, you follow along with the template, and you just build. Much easier in Minecraft than it is in Arc, but damn, did we make it work. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed. I will be back with another video in this zoo series in the very near future. More breeding, and then more building of cool enclosures using these mods. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Tag for inviting me to tag along, and I will see you guys in the next zoo episode.